better globe for a better future. Uh, we will start here on this spot uh, and we will walk first through a tree species which is called uh, Mukau, which I think you know. Mukau or Melia volkensi in its scientific name, a very fast grower. Then we'll continue through name, and then we'll go to the Jatropha, which is the seedlings that you planted. Please. I can just uh, add on that I have checked a lot of uh, mahogany prices and qualities and everything and Jan he made a comparison with Mukau, uh, African and American mahogany and teak and in fact mahog our mahogany tree Mukau comes out very well on top you know it beats uh, hardness uh, most of it only teak is a bit harder but the qualities are very similar so you know it it can compare be comparable to any teak mahogany on the market. I think it's a fantastic tree. It is. This tree has gone through laboratory tests. It is tested on strength, on hardness, on bending, everything. And really, uh, it beats mahogany. Yeah. So this is an exceptional tree. And um, you could even say by planting this tree, we're going to protect the rainforest. Yes. If we do good marketing and we have eh, uh, really, over a hundred thousand hectares of plantation of this tree, that just will save a hell of a lot of the Amazon, where the American mahogany comes from, and uh, the African uh, rainforest like the Congo Basin and Cameroon, where the African mahogany is coming from. And we're going to sell this under the label of sustainably produced wood, which will be certified, and which was an additional selling point, because within a couple of years, nobody in Europe anymore will want to buy any wood that comes out of a rainforest because they will want to preserve, to preserve the rainforest and to, to stop as much as possible global climate change. And another argument which a lot of people are making now is about food. People say the investors in Africa want to grab land from the poor farmers and the poor farmers will not benefit and they will not be able to grow their food. Well, in our case, this is not true. In our case, we will grow these trees where food does not grow. For instance, people, uh, they strip off the bark and mix some tea of it in water against malaria. And it works. But it works for a lot more things. It is a tree that is very much in fashion in uh, the beauty products industry. Mm -hmm. eh? Shampoos, soaps. We are a small plantation, we have 23 hectares of name trees and they will start yielding within some three more years. But we will not use it for beauty products. We will use it as insecticides. It's very good as insecticides and it can be used a lot in the horticultural industry as a repellent against insects that damage roses, tomatoes, vegetables in general, and it's biological. It's a biological uh, insect repellent, which makes it also very attractive more and more. Now that in the West, people do not want to buy vegetables that have been grown in heavily sprayed greenhouses or something. This name tree then is different in this respect from Mukau that here we will harvest on an annual basis. Mukau is a timber tree. Uh, you cut it, it's gone. <laughs> and you have to plant again. <laughs> yeah, like pine trees in Norway. <laughs> this name tree, every year we will come back and harvest the seeds. Which is the same thing which we will do with the, our diesel tree just around the hilltop. Just follow, please. Uh, uh, Mexico originally, yeah. but it has been uh, planted all over the world now. This is the fruits, yeah. actually it's not yet ripe, it has to become black. And this is then how the seeds look like. 
and this is oppressed for oil. Huh? The oil can be used straight uh, in an engine, uh, but you have to be careful. Uh, it is similar to diesel, but uh, a normal diesel engine, like in a car, has to be a bit modified to use it. Or you have to modify the fuel and then you have to blend it with uh, the normal diesel. And uh, the normal blending uh, criteria are, for instance, 20% of this Jatrofa oil and 80% of normal diesel. In, uh, in Europe, uh, this, uh, 20, uh, uh, this 20 this percent I think is already being used, but for uh, rapeseed oil or for straight vegetable oil that comes out of uh, restaurants, uh, these things. welcome you to this launch of my book Put Integrity First. You might ask uh, why the name Put Integrity First? Well, first and foremost, uh, I have been around since I, uh, like I told you, since 1979 in East Africa, done business in Uganda uh, for, for almost 15 years, in Kenya about six, seven years. We have trained uh, I was the one to, in fact, be invited to Uganda by the President Museveni himself in Norway in 94 to come and train the companies there to get qualified to ISO 9000 standard, which I did. And I personally trained more than 100 companies in Uganda and Kenya to, uh, to, uh, to my company, Total Quality Management, to be certified to ISO 9000. And I brought a Norwegian company, Nemco, down to certify them because we couldn't do that ourselves. We needed some uh, third party to do that. Now, uh, food integrity first, I found that uh, to be a, a good name on the book because I think that regardless of what your knowledge are about anything, if you don't have integrity, uh, it's not worth a lot. And you will not be able to do much if you don't have integrity. So that is uh, why I said put integrity first must be the name of the game. Wherever you are, whatever you do, integrity must be front uh, of you. If not, uh, you won't get far. Short-term thinking uh, way, and that is spoils the life. Because if you think that you have to be rich in the short term, there's only one way, you go crooked. You see, that is the worst thing. And there's a saying that goes that everybody is after the easy way.